Good morning, and welcome to Redeemer Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Gary Lodeholt. Most times we hold on to the last words that people say. I even have a book on my shelf of famous last words spoken by famous people. We somehow think there is some special wisdom or poignancy to someone's final statement. I think there's even more poignancy to Jesus' words that he spoke after he had died. In other words, I think that his words after the resurrection are fraught with special meaning for us, which is interesting when we come to the words of Jesus that we plan to look at today. At the end of the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus said, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. Now, we all agree with that. We all think that is a good thing. Only, we typically don't want to be the ones doing it. Last week and this week, we're looking at the words Jesus spoke after his resurrection because as the risen Lord's, his words do somehow take on a special significance. And maybe we should reconsider our lethargy about our response to Jesus' words here. About 35 or 40 years ago, the Lutheran Church body I'm a part of initiated a program called Word and Witness. Intended as a period of study with a group, the course had two main areas of concentration. There was extended study about the Bible. The class went through pretty sophisticated study of both the Old and New Testaments, giving the participants a foundation of understanding about God and God's story to save and redeem God's people. That's the part of the classes that everyone liked. Then came the witness part. Now, frankly, many of us struggle to witness in our daily lives. We don't want to come off as holier than thou or one of those people who can't seem to talk about anything but their religion. Most of us want to be normal people, relating to others in ways that aren't uncomfortable for others or for us. And then there is the fact that most of us don't think we know enough about the Bible to talk about it. And so most of the time, we don't. That was the beauty of the Word and Witness curriculum. It started with sharing information about the Bible, but that part was gravy. That was the added benefit. The real meat was, in fact, in that witness part of the classes. You see, the classes redefined what witnessing was and how to go about it. Witnessing wasn't about talking about the Bible at all, the classes taught. Rather, witnessing was about telling your story. It was about telling who God was for you, how you saw God acting in your life, and what God meant for you. You don't have to know any Bible to talk about that and you are the expert on you. So the program emphasized that witnessing was about relationship. I tell my story, you tell your story, and together we discover God's story. That's it. And suddenly, going out to all nations and sharing the news of Jesus doesn't seem so difficult or frightening anymore. It almost seems like we could do it. It almost seems like we could begin with the people we like best. The other thing I always think about is that it's easy to talk about something you're excited about. And I worry sometimes that if we aren't talking about Jesus, does that mean we aren't excited about him and what he does in our lives? That may be a question worthy of pondering. We also can't ignore the fact that we are told to go to all nations. Faith in God and the good news of the gospel is not just for us. God is for all people. And that means people different from us, people we are afraid of, and people we want nothing to do with. We may want nothing to do with them, 
But that's not how God is. God invites everyone because God loves everyone. Finally, as we focus on the words Jesus actually said, I think it's important to note that Jesus invites us not just to tell the news, but to make disciples. A disciple is one who follows, who seeks to pattern their lives after the way of another. And these words of Jesus here seem to mean first that we should pattern our own lives after Jesus. Not an easy task and not one we're always very good at. And we should invite others not just to believe or assent to Jesus with their minds, but to respond exultantly with their hearts and lives. Maybe you've never thought about that there is a difference between believing and following. We are called to be and to invite followers. When God created humanity, God made us in God's image. Maybe being a follower in heart and life is what that means. Now get up and get at it. Go. Thanks for watching, and remember to let this day belong to God.